So I've been playing racing games on a wheel for quite a while. I've used various Thrustmaster wheels, I've used various Logitech wheels before getting to here where we are today. Moza kindly offered to send out a review unit of their R5 bundle with the SRP pedals, brake mod and their HGP shifter. And this is super interesting for me for a few reasons. I've wanted to try direct drive for so, so long. I, like many of you guys, am not an eSports gamer. But I have sank quite literally months of playtime into free roam maps on a set of Corsa, hot lapping with friends, countless, countless, countless hours in F1 career mode. And I honestly think this is where the majority of people who are going to pick up a wheel are gonna kinda lie. Most of us are not buying wheels to race in the duty championships. So it never made sense for us to go ahead and make that leap up to direct drive. Until now, potentially, possibly, perhaps. It's a lot easier to spend 500 pounds on a direct drive wheel compared to the 1500 pounds it would have cost in previous years. So I kind of want to talk about what is the difference between a belt driven wheel, a direct drive wheel, and most importantly, is it worth upgrading if you are looking at say a Logitech wheel? So with that being said, can you feel the difference? Absolutely. Now, I don't think this is necessarily gonna make you like a better driver. If you can't go around a circuit on a Logitech, I don't think having all this extra feel and stuff is necessarily gonna help with a direct drive wheel. But from like a pleasure perspective and from a feel perspective and a feedback perspective, the engagements feel way smoother. When you go over potholes and bumps in the road, it feels like it's actually coming through a steering column and, and, and not as kind of artificial, I think is probably the better way of explaining it. The best way I can put into words to explain this is the direct drive wheels force feedback almost feels like cornered off the edges, if that makes sense. So a Logitech wheel for me felt very sharp when you were going over bumps. The other benefit you get with direct drive is the power. And let me tell you, you might think because this has a low newton meter count, aka uh, overall power that it can deliver, it might not be enough. Well, I'm here to tell you that is not true. This has way, way, way more strength than my G29 did. And I only honestly run the wheel at about 35 to 45% because uh, I have quite like creaky floorboards. So if it goes any higher than that with my wheel stand, it would just shake the whole house. I can only imagine what the like upgraded Fanatec wheels are like and even the Moser offerings like the R9, they must be mental. Yeah, you're gonna have to strap me into some type of fucking human crane cockpit for that one. I've got to say the overall build of this wheel as well is fantastic. Priced in at around 600 pounds with the clutch and without the shifter, you kind of would expect that the build quality is going to be good. Comparing it to the Logitech, uh, that wheel, the, the leather almost feels kind of like toyish. It doesn't feel real. Some of Thrustmaster's more budget offerings are plastic. It's not till you get to a similar price to the Moser where things start to feel a bit more premium, but I've got to say overall, everything I've used from this brand so far has actually really surprised me in the build quality department. The pedals are all metal. The wheel, the leather on the wheel, it just feels like brand new leather you would get in a car, if not a touch bit slippery. It's quick release, so that makes it really easy to pack away and set back up. You know, I imagine those kind of things like for convenience are very important if you are looking at this wheel and it definitely does help. All metal construction, the brake pedal with the brake mod, which I personally think is a must. If you buy this bundle, you have to buy that uh, that brake mod. Otherwise, you just kind of have not as much feedback when you're pressing into the brake pedal. But once you do have that mod, braking is very progressive. It feels really good. You know exactly where your foot is in the brake pedal. Feels closer to a real life car. Now the shifter is kind of extra to this bundle. I've got another video coming with the wheel, and there's a whole thing happening around that. But I won't get into that in today's video. Up there with my MX-5 and my Porsche in terms of feel if not a little bit too notchy. I don't know whether this is something that will improve over time as 
you know, the shifter gets more bedded in and you kind of use it uh, over time and it might get a little bit looser kind of thing. But it's just a tad bit too notchy, but I do feel like I'm nitpicking here. Very clunky, you know exactly what gear you're in. You're almost never going to miss shift with this. I think, again, it just comes to the overall build quality point I was making. Like, really, really good. I was really, really surprised. But not only that, you also get some goodies in the unboxing experience. So the wheel comes with this carrying pouch, and then also the, uh, the actual wheelbase comes with a carrying pouch as well. I thought that was really nice. I use it to put over my wheelbase and my uh, steering wheel when I'm not using it to kind of stop dust from getting into the ingresses. As you, as you can imagine, my setup is really dusty. We've got a lot of equipment in here. So having those things, it's just kind of a nice bonus, really. They didn't have to do that. Not many of the companies that I know around this price point do do that. So it was just a really nice addition. But don't get it twisted. It is not all perfect. There is definitely some things that you are going to be missing from the Moser in comparison to the Thrustmaster offerings. And I do definitely want to touch on that. So I want to say compatibility is definitely not plug and play, even on PC. On Assetto, it was pretty easy to set up. I used this on Assetto, I used it on F1, I used it on uh, Forza Horizon as well, kind of the main games I play. And with Forza for Horizon, for example, there was some setup you needed to do. You needed to mess with some config files. It wasn't the type of thing where with the Thrustmaster, you plug it in, it works. With the Logitech, you plug it in, it works. It's not like that. You are going to need to do a bit of setup. So if you aren't PC savvy like that, I can see that being a turn off. This one I feel a bit bad about mentioning because you kind of already know this, but obviously there's no console compatibility. You can get third party accessories to make it work on a PS5 or an Xbox. There's a device called Brook where basically it's like a hundred pound device and you use it and you are able to use your wheel without the shifter though only the wheel on console I think that does kind of transform it at least it's possible it's not like it's not absolutely possible but you know it's just something to keep in mind if you get a Logitech or a Thrustmaster those can work on PlayStation and Xbox this is a PC exclusive wheel that does limit it and I really do hope Moza can patch this in the future Moza if you're listening please god do that please I need to play a GT7 on a wheel finally please I've heard shipping to certain countries can be astronomical and obviously the elephant in the room it's a direct drive wheel it is a is definitely going to be more expensive than the logitech offerings not too far off the thrustmaster offerings but i genuinely do believe like the money you pay for what you get is is definitely worth it and i do quickly want to talk about the other offerings because like i mentioned i've used these all before the thrustmaster i bought with my own money the logitech i got sent by logitech and i just wanted to give you guys that bit of context i kind of just want to put that in here as a disclaimer so you guys know exactly where i'm coming from but with both my g29 and my g27 i experienced issues uh, long term my g27 uh, the actual uh, force feedback completely broke and i that, that was the reason why i ended up buying my Thrustmaster because the, the the kind of force feedback completely just died on me as well as the shifter the shifter has died on me twice um with my G27 shifter, sixth stopped working, and then with my G29, reverse stopped working. This was after about maybe a year or two, so that's something to keep in mind. The build quality, I, I, I obviously have not used this for years on years yet, but I genuinely feel with the way it all feels, the metal construction, you could drop this off a building and you're not gonna have any problems with having this last over a very long period. Thrustmaster, I think, actually comes a lot closer to what Moza are doing and it is a little bit cheaper and you get the console compatibility. Uh, I'd say the accessories for the Moza are a, are a bit better. The shifter is definitely better than the Thrustmaster shifter, even though it doesn't have sequential mode. Uh, I would probably still go for this shifter. And I think in terms of general build quality, Moza just edges it with the metal construction. I'd say if you don't mind using those third party accessories to get this working with a console, it could be worth it depending on your budget. I honestly think that just comes up to you really, like what do you value more, you know, and where, you know, are you okay with messing with a few config files to get a better experience or do you want plug and play? Do you want console compatibility straight out of the box? I think that is what it's going to come up to and only you can answer that question. 
So, to conclude this video, this is a solid wheel for PC. I don't think anything really comes close to it in terms of value, uh, at, at least in the direct drive world anyway. Direct drive is an absolute must if you are looking at upgrading from a G29. I think this is a perfect stepping stone and I don't, honestly don't really think you really need much more power. Like, like I said, I run this on 30 to 45% force feedback and that is more than enough for me without shaking the earth. So yeah, hit the like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have been awesome. Stay safe and peace. Clap.